Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-86. The previous episode of the podcast featured the party sending off a request for information into the coffer box. While the group moved on to do other things, they left Karina to wait for the answer. After leaving, she put in another piece of parchment and later received answers to both papers, but did not divulge the second item to anyone. Sister Elaine visited the local temple and discovered the true power of her wand of healing and met the artistic friar in charge of the temple. We rejoin the party now as they move through town gathering everyone to read the answer to the question. The party sits in the common room of the Crossed Swords Inn with Fargus and Bulger already tipsy from their pub crawl in Tunis. Fine, I won't have another, just read the damn letter complained the angry gnome. He and the ranger had been having a fantastic time drinking spirits when they were stopped to discover the answer to the group's question. Lady Irena took the missive and began to scan it before Cabe Silvertongue chastised her for not letting everyone know the answer. Her apology was hurried and it appeared that it was an accident and she quickly began to read it aloud to the group. After making several inquiries, we have located and contacted the person you requested information on. Hagrid Toulouse has agreed to meet with you in Fort Myers in three days. It should be noted that he is a busy man and he should not be kept waiting. If you honestly seek to meet with him, you should proceed to that location and find him. Where in the Hades is Fort Myers? queried Karina, but received only shrugging shoulders in response. Tressa Norink, the watch commander, spoke up. It is about three days due east from here, through Orc territory. The group looked skeptically at each other and began to mull over their options. Sister Elaine spoke up and suggested that they take the coffer to Fort Myers, but the guard commander shook her head. No, there is no coffer box there, and you would just be putting yourself further away from your goal. You will need to ride, and ride as soon as possible if you wish to make your deadline. Cape was crestfallen at the news as he had been enjoying Tress's company and his sadness was evident. Bulger spoke up and suggested that they could split up, with some leaving immediately and others catching up a bit later, but it was all nixed by everyone present. The half-elf struggled with his words to the attractive commander, but she pressed a finger against his lips. Go, and go quickly before I kidnap you and keep you here, was her reply, as she smiled and replaced her finger with her lips. Besides, you can always return once your business is concluded. Cape smiled as Fargus and Bulger were already headed to their rooms. The commander stood up and straightened herself up, pointing out that she had to check on her people anyway. The bard watched her leave, sadness evident in his face. Lady Irena and Sister Elaine grabbed him by the shoulders and pushed him towards the stairs so he could get packed, and Karina excused herself. As the trio followed the ranger and former sailor up the stairs, the waif headed out back to the stable where she found Eddie speaking to a young woman. Upon seeing the older woman, he hobbled over to her with a big smile on his face. The boy gushed at the attention he was receiving from the curly-headed girl and pointed out that she had heard about the bully incident. Karina smiled brightly and gave the young man a pat on the back. I have to leave soon, but I wanted to give you this, Eddie. The boy looked back quizzically as she handed him a soft leather purse that jingled with coins. He opened it and gasped audibly as the waif gave him forty gold pieces, which was a massive sum for the stable boy. He smiled but recovered and pushed the money back to her, stating it was hers and it wasn't right to take. The waif explained that she already had plenty of money and he could use it to buy new clothes or buy the girl a treat. She gave him a heartfelt story about how money would make his life easier as a tear rolled down his face. I... I will miss you. He huffed out, trying to fight back the tears. They embraced tightly as she too fought back the tears. 
You be good or I'll come back and kick your ass, she warned the boy, who shook his head in obedience and gave her another hug. Patty Nettie on the back, she rose to her feet and told him to get a hold of her if there were any other bully problems. He assured her that he would, but he felt fairly confident that he was going to be left alone for the foreseeable future. He asked if he needed to get the horses ready, and she told him yes, pointing out that they would be leaving within the hour. He returned to the young girl and pointed out that he had important adventuring business to attend to before shuffling off towards the stables. The girl smiled broadly and was obviously impressed. Karina returned upstairs and began to pack her meager belongings as Lady Irena inquired if the stable boy were getting their mounts ready. The waif confirmed the situation and the mage pointed out that Karina had given the young man the confidence he needed to propel him through the rest of his life. Karina smiled as she gathered her belongings. In the men's room, the boys gathered their belongings as Cabe looked glum. Bulger was packing and Fargus noticed the half-elf and gave the gnome a jab to the ribs. The pair looked at the melancholy bard and attempted to console him, but Cabe wasn't having any of that. Come on guys, a girl in every town, you just gotta keep moving to the next one. You know, I can't keep all the women waiting, we are heroic figures. But his facade was quite transparent. The pair of warriors looked at each other and nodded, yeah. Yeah, that's us. We got women everywhere, by golly. We don't need any single one of them hanging around to our coattails and slowing us down. Cabe finished gathering his belongings and looked up to smile about the situation and realized that there was little he could do about it. Peering out the window, he noticed that Eddie was quickly getting their mounts ready. Gotta hand it to that kid. He moves faster than a three-legged stable boy. The men hauled their rucksacks over their shoulders and exited the room only to find the women ready to go. They descended the stairs, but were stopped by the innkeeper who questioned them about their departure. Fargus pointed out that they had to leave town and to keep the money spent on the rooms. As the group went to the rear of the inn, they were met by Eddie and Tressa. The latter took Cabe aside as the others attempted to pay the stable boy, who politely declined, stating that the matter had already been settled. The party watched as the watch commander handed something to Cabe but could not tell what it was. Everyone climbed onto their mounts with a chirping peepers, glad to have his mistress astride him, and Eddie hobbled off to stand next to the watch commander. Watching the young boy hobble made them all pause and look at each other. Fargus gave a nod to Sister Elaine who reached within the folds of her robes. The group spurred their mounts ahead and out of town quickly. The cleric stopped at Eddie and quickly pointed her wand at him, causing a flash of light to engulf the young man, knocking him over onto his back. She saluted the watch commander, who helped Eddie back to his feet. Stunned and puzzled, the boy asked Tressa why the priestess attacked him. The woman laughed and, it, and asked Eddie to run over and get her some rope. He quickly complied but got halfway across the corral before realizing his leg had been healed. Leaving the confines of Tunis, a smile crossed all of their faces as they nodded to Sister Elaine. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.